Hi, and welcome to Kit Guru with me, Alistair. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Asus ROG Fusion 2 500 gaming headset. Before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe using the buttons below. The ROG Fusion 2 500 is Asus's latest virtual 7.1 gaming headset. But with a rather hefty price tag of €209.99, how does it stand up in a heavily saturated market? Upon opening this box, we have the headphones themselves in quite a solid plastic housing. If we remove this plastic and turn it over, you'll be greeted with a small box containing a USB-C to A adapter, a pair of ROG hybrid ear cushions, the warranty booklet, and a quick start guide. Underneath the box is a braided USB-C cable and a braided 3.5mm jack cable. Overall, the packaging is really nice and compact without using too much plastic, and it's always nice to be as environmentally friendly as we can. Overall, the headset has quite a premium look, but maybe not so much build, with some silver accenting to liven up the dark grey look, and obviously the LEDs as well. A nice touch is that the Asus ROG logo can be found on the mesh on the inside of each ear cup. The headset, unfortunately, is mostly built from quite a rigid plastic, with a leatherette cushion on the headband. The arms connecting the headband with each ear cup do have a metal band in them, which provides some strength and tries to help avoid any breakages. Each side of the headband has 8 stops of adjustment, so they should fit for most folks, and even though I wore the headphones for extended periods, I didn't feel any excessive pressure from either the cups or the headband, and at no point was I worried the headphones might slip off. The cushions supplied as standard are leatherette and very comfortable, however I did switch to the hybrid cushion supplied in the box as I found my ears getting quite warm quite quickly, and nobody wants sweaty headphones. Each ear cup can rotate both horizontally and vertically for a really comfy fit on any head, and they also feature buttons and wheels on each ear to provide easily accessible controls for the headset. The left ear has a microphone on off switch, an audio control wheel which you can roll to adjust the volume, or press to enable or disable the virtual 7.1 surround sound functionality. Next to these controls you will find a USB-C port and a 3.5mm jack port for connecting the headset to a device. It's worth pointing out that the headset is wired only and doesn't support any wireless functionality. Finally, on the left ear, we have a small indicator that turns red with the virtual 7.1 surround sound as enabled. Over on the right ear, we have a PC slash console mode switch and a game chat volume control, which you can scroll up to increase the volume of in-game chat, or scroll it down to increase in-game volume. Each ear cup also features Asus Aura RGB lighting, which you can personalise through the Asus Armoury crate application. With support for up to 16.8 million colour combinations and 6 preset lighting effects, there's a lot of customization available. My only gripe with the RGB lighting is the, the strips on the rear of the ear cups, and most gaming headsets will have the RGB in the centre or even slightly towards the front, as turning the head might show this off, however to see it on the Fusion 2 500, you'd have to be seeing it from the rear. On the inside, the Fusion 2500 headset is built around the Hi-Res ESS9280 Quad DAC, which for those of you who keep an eye or ear for that matter on the Asus catalogue, will recognise as the same Hi-Res DAC used on the Asus ROG Delta headset and the Asus ROG Phone 5. The DAC is the component used to convert a digital signal into an analogue one, and this analogue signal is then passed to the driver which generates the sound. This headset uses 50mm drivers built around neodymium magnets and an airtight chamber around the driver which is designed to provide a more stable and richer sound. In terms of sound quality, those larger drivers do produce quite a nice low end, and with support for 24-bit 96kHz high-res audio and 7.1 surround sound gaming, it's really easy to get immersed in games, films, or any other content you might be listening to. In practice, the headset provided clear and crisp sound, allowing me to easily hear and place sounds in my surroundings thanks to the virtual 7.1 surround sound, especially with things like footsteps and Call of Duty. And I was also really pleasantly surprised when listening to music, with the larger drivers really helping to provide clear bass. This isn't to say that the mids or high ends suffered, as I could still hear those tasty guitar licks and vocals without them being overpowered in any sense. Mm -hmm. 
I will point out here that I tested first on the flat profile, which was better than any of the preset profiles in my opinion, as I found the music profile tended to cut the bass frequencies quite significantly, and the FPS profile compressed the signal really heavily. If I was able to give any advice, it would be to set the headset as flat, then use the EQ to sculpt the sound that you're looking for, whilst using bass boost and compressor sliding sparingly. The headset features ROG grounding technology, which is aimed at reducing electromagnetic interference resulting in noise. Not that noise is an issue with these headphones, as Asus claim the Quad Digital to Analog Converter, or DAC, provides a 130 decibel signal to noise ratio. The Fusion 2500 headset is also certified for Discord and TeamSpeak, and a big part of any headset for software like this is the microphone. Whether you're giving callouts in Call of Duty or you're on a conference call, you need your microphone to be clear. Asus have adopted an interesting approach by implementing beamforming microphones, which means that there are multiple microphones to better pick up a user's voice whilst reducing noise. The microphone is also capable of utilising AI noise cancellation technology, but it's worth being aware that this is only available when you're using the USB connection, and it's not supported if you're using the 3.5mm connection. You can listen to me talk about it all day, but why not hear how the microphone sounds for yourself? This is a test of the Asus Fusion 2500 headset microphone. As you can hear, it's actually quite tinny. Right now, everything in the Asus Armoury Crate software is either turned off and the EQ is set to flat. So we're not doing any additional processing. This is just the audio as it comes straight out of the microphone. It's not the best, if I'm going to be honest. This is a test of the Asus Fusion 2500 headset microphone, but this time we have the noise gate turned on, the perfect voice slider turned on, and the AI noise cancellation turned on. The noise gate and perfect voice slider are set to 50%, and the AI noise cancellation is set to mid. As you can hear, there might be a slight improvement, but again, I would be expecting a lot better audio quality from a, a headset in this price range. In comparison, this is a test of the Corsair HS70 Pro wireless headset, which happens to be my go-to gaming headset. And the headset, the Corsair HS70 Pro wireless, is significantly cheaper. Than as you can hear, the audio quality from the microphone is what I would describe as usable at best. The microphone is quite tinny with no processing applied in the Armoury Crate software, and when turning on perfect voice, noise gate, and AI noise reduction, the quality doesn't improve all that much if you ask me. When applied, it sounds as though the noise cancellation is being applied like a low pass filter, with higher frequencies just being cut. This is most notable when I pronounce an S, as it almost reduces this to something akin to a hiss. Another gripe is that if the microphone were to break at any point, I would need to replace the whole headset, and this is the main reason that I'm a big proponent of removable microphones on gaming headsets. A positive of the beamforming microphone is that you aren't in danger of deafening anyone from the other side of the call with poor microphone placement or by accidentally knocking the mic. So let's have a look at the Armoury Crate application, which we can use to configure the Fusion 2500. On launching the application, we can choose between any ASUS devices we have connected, and doing so allows us to configure the available parameters for that device. Along the top of this centre panel, you can choose between three different tabs, audio, lighting and firmware update. Under the audio tab, we have access to a whole bunch of audio controls, and starting from the left, we have playback and record settings, where we choose to set this headset as our default playback or recording device within the operating system, as well as set the playback or record volume. There's also a control for the chat mix, reflecting the wheels we have on the headset itself, and what you'll see is that these update live as I adjust the physical controls on the headset. In the centre of the audio tab, we have a drop down box from which we can choose different preset profiles for things like FPS or RPG gaming, or even for watching films. I left this set to flat for most of my testing as I was quite happy with the sound quality of the headset, and any changes that I did implement were very slight and I used the equaliser for. Speaking of the equaliser, it can be found below our audio meters for each channel of our 7.1 surround sound, and a control to add reverb with choices for different room sizes from studio up to stadium. 
The EQ is a 10 band EQ, giving you quite a lot of control to dial in the sound however you want. And combined with the bass boost, compressor and voice clarity sliders, you'll find that you've got a really good chance of getting some pleasing audio out of these headphones. To round off the controls, we have a noise gate for the microphone, a perfect voice slider and three levels of AI noise cancellation. Now, not to get confused between the voice clarity and the perfect voice sliders, the voice clarity control is used to increase vocal clarity when listening to music or movies, whilst the perfect voice slider control is designed to boost any vocals picked up by the microphone. Under the lighting tab, we can choose from a range of preset lighting animations like colour cycle or rainbow, and then adjust parameters like the colour and brightness on the right hand side of the window. If we want to get more advanced and create our own lighting effects and animations, we can do so using the Aura Creator software. I can open the Aura Creator software by clicking on this button here, and once inside the application, we can select to create custom lighting animations for one or all of the connected Asus devices. Each cup has seven different LEDs that can be individually configured within the Aura Creator application. The final tab is the firmware update tab, and it does exactly what it says on the label. Clicking this allows us to check for any firmware updates, and if there are any, install them. My final thoughts on the headset are that I was really impressed with the audio quality from the headphones, and that they're packed full of nice features, however I was really let down with the quality of the microphone. It's not the quality I would expect from a modern gaming headset, let alone one in this price range. It can be tweaked to a state of usable with the AI noise reduction, noise gate and perfect voice controls, but when you're paying so much you don't want it to just be usable. Whilst I commend Asus for being brave enough to try something different with the inclusion of beamforming microphone, it feels like there's an obvious reason most headsets still rely on microphones that are on boom arms. The ability to speak freely without worrying about mic position doesn't outweigh the negatives in my opinion. It's also worth mentioning that the level of control for shaping the sound out of the headphones within Armoury Crate is quite extensive and a bit of a plus, but my biggest complaints with the headset are that for the price the microphone quality is lacking and having a majority plastic construction feels like a bit of a letdown at this price. It would also be nice for high-end headsets to have the option of wireless connections as currently you're tethered to your computer quite closely. The headsets are one of the most easily broken peripherals and for such a high price tag I'd want more metal in the build, and I'm always a fan of less cables where possible. If this headset doesn't tickle your fancy then it might be worth having a look at the HyperX Cloud 2 or the Razer X Barracuda, both of which are wireless headsets with a more traditional microphone. If I had to say who this headset was for, someone who doesn't go on TeamSpeak or calls all that much, maybe someone just looking for really high quality audio for whatever they are consuming. That's all from me on the Asus ROG Fusion 2500 headset. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Also don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps the Kit Guru channel out. And hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we upload. You can follow us on all social media platforms for the latest updates. Finally, if you want to get your hands on some Kit Guru merch, you can find it from the link below. As always, thanks for watching.